Morning. I put yesterday's effort in this frame, which I had. Uh, yeah, I really enjoyed doing this one, and I've, I've had quite a few views on it, and lots and lots of kind words said about it. So from the same area, I'm, I, I took this photograph here, I hope you can see it. Um, let's uh, turn my fingers the other way. What, what it is, basically, oh, sorry, no, that's, that's better. Basically, what a horrible word. Anyway, there it is. Between two clumps of trees, looking out towards Bosham, and we've got water, you can't see it really in the photograph, but there's, there's uh, low tide in the middle and an overcast sky, but I'll, I'll do the poppy trick and see how we get on. Right, I'll uh, move that out of the way, take that down, and I've got my piece of uh, paper, watercolour paper, on an old on a painting I didn't like. Well, when I started it went wrong. Uh, that happens to me, believe you me. Uh, so, uh, let's push those tabs in. Oh, okay. Someone asked me what easel I'm using. Well, it's just a, a travelling studio, really, a box easel. I've got other easels, I've got a studio easel. easel. Well, and I put a big table in front of that, made from a lump of wardrobe. So what I've done, I've primed both sides of this piece of Fabriano. It doesn't matter, it could be anything. I've primed it both sides with a PVA glue. Now a PVA glue, it's wood glue, not there, a joinery adhesive. Water resistant when it's dry. I've put it in this little medicine pot, pill pot, and diluted it with a bit of water to make it flow if I need it, but that's what I use for, for varnishing if I, if I wish to, for priming both sides of the paper because it, was, it stops it buckling. And, and as far as I'm concerned, that is completely sealed and I've given it a coat of burnt sienna, my favourite colour. Well, here's my palette. I won't hold it up too high because it's, I, it's, the paper's absorbed quite a bit of water overnight. I've left too much in the sponge, so the paint is, paint's got a little, a little bit uh, sloppy. So we've got lemon yellow, uh, yellow ochre, white of course, titanium white, vermilion for the poppies, alizarin, uh, but I didn't use that yesterday, I probably won't use it today. Some light red for the for, to make the cloud colour with the ultramarine, uh, burnt sienna, black and viridian. So that's the basic palette. Here's now the, the brushes, great expensive brushes don't make great expensive looking paintings. You paint with your head, the brush is just an extension of, of your hand which is attached to your brain. And these are very cheap brushes, well, they're Chinese bristles, lots of those are their bristles, but they do the job. And they go right up there. I like to use the largest brushes possible to do this. Um, so, and I've got some watercolour riggers which I shall use for any detail. Now, Bosham is famous not just for its beautiful location but because of its church. Uh, and I'll, I'll put the church in. The, the church itself is sort of, if I can show you, it's, um, it's one of these, it, and it comes out at the bottom. And then you can show the side if you wish. It flares. It's a bit like a witch's or wizard's hat. And, and it's a, in a particularly beautiful location and it's very famous. Bosham Church. If you're ever down that way, West Sussex, pay Bosham a visit. You will be well rewarded. Anywhere around the Chichester Harbour area is glorious. It's flat, but you've got these, these trees that uh, give you your verticals. You do need verticals. I'm just going to enlarge this a bit and get ready. I've got to finish my cup of tea. So I'm going to move that just a little bit to one side. That way you can see most or all of the of the piece of paper that I'm working on. So I'm going to start as usual with the sky. 
I'm just going to put it in. I'm not going to do anything fancy. I'm just going to put some colour on, on this uh, burnt sienna. And I'll use a first brush that comes to hand. I'll use this one. Right, so plenty of white, a bit of yellow ochre, maybe a touch of vermilion. And just just dub it about. Now the paint is just a little bit on the thin side now, but it doesn't matter. This dries very quickly. I'm not diluting it at this stage, nor am I mixing it with that uh, PVA glue. I'm just going to come down and just just kill the canvas, go down to the horizon with it. It was a dull, warm day. And I know you won't believe me if I say that, really, we were on our way to the pub in, a pub in Chichester. But we were. So that was the reward for the work of walking. Right, so put that in there. And I'll use another brush now, and I'll put in some of this uh, green foreground. Nice dark, I, I'll use a bit of, bit of black, a load of lemon yellow, a bit of red. And just, just drop it on. There's a bit of ochre in there as well. Now this all looks a right mess at the moment, of course, but it, it might look a bit of a mess at the end, but hey, having fun. should enjoy what you do. It's endlessly frustrating, of course, when things don't go according to plan. Right now we've got some nice light, but greens, a bush here, coming across into the middle. I'll often, I'll, no, I'm going to paint as the photograph, but as you know, it won't be a slavish copy. I'm going to just get some, some of this bit of dark. You need plenty of dark in your foregrounds to counter change your lights against. And I mix a bit of, bit of that, a bit of, bit of shadow. But I want predominantly ready colours over that because the greens will show, but you want light to show with your grasses, catching the sunlight, well it's the cloud light, and uh, by painting dark you can exaggerate your lights. Seems obvious but be surprised how many people don't do this. So let's put some shadow in here, a bit of dark. This, as you put paint on this and it dries, it, it takes the paper takes on a surface that means you can you can drag over it. So that's why do all these brush lines they become part of the surface as it dries, which is very quick. So we've got a big tree here and we've got a big tree coming further into the picture. So we put that in. Let's try a bit of ultramarine with that. Burnt sienna, let's just get that up here. Because whatever you put down, you can change at any time, especially with acrylic, because it's so, it dries so quickly, you can get on with the painting. So let's just blend that in there. Some leaves, some road bits, just, just straggly bits, just sticking out. And we'll go over with the sky later. But let's get this in. So black, blue, yellow. That makes a nice blue green. So that, that, lovely, luscious. Come over a bit with this one. Put some. Oh, I like that blue, bluey green. Very deep blue green. Made with ultramarine, black, and lemon yellow. Okay, we'll add that that nice dark green, bluey green. In here, and we want the dark shadows because the light's coming from the front. I haven't even thought about putting the distance in yet, 
But as you see, you, you, we're, we're framing that middle section. Okay, really nice darks. Get the shape of the base of this, the foliage of this tree. Right, there are nice bits of dark in here. Black, blue, yellow, and this is the. I'm trying to do these in one sitting. And so, hence this speed. But now, if your paint's not dry when you go over it, it'll take it off. So, we're going to put that back. You can always use a hairdryer. Right, okay. Let's put in, let's indicate the back. Just, the screen's going black. So, let's just again. Okay, so we'll, we'll put in a nice blue, that blue, grey, green, but with a bit of white. But, but I want it on the blue side, so we can do this uh, distance. That's probably too much, but I'm going to go over this. It's just a, a memoir to remind me that, oh, that I have actually got a background in there. Uh, do the chip bottom church. Oh, come over there. Well, that'll do it for a moment, and then we've got uh, a bit of bit of yellow oak and white. I think we'll uh, put across here. This this will be the salt marsh. And that brush, uh -huh. that brush will do. There we are. So <coughs> we've got water in this background. So this is a bit of bluey, reddy light, grey. I can thicken this up. There's a gorgeous pub in this area called The House From Home. Oh, beautiful. Lovely little forecourt and lovely garden at the back. Reassuringly expensive beers, but considering where it is, Lovely. So if you come on holiday with me, you be sure that you'll never be far from a pub. Don't drink huge amounts, but just, just like real ale, proper beer. Okay, so that, that'll do for, for that for the moment. So a bit of the sky we're fixing there. All right, let's do a bit of sky now. A bit of light. This is a nice cloud in here. Nice light cloud. So what I mean by covering up it? And then just build the paint as you go. light coming down here, a bit of grey light I think, a bit of ochre. And we're just putting the sky holes back in there. And we've got a bit of darker cloud. So just the blue and the ultramarine. But one of the reddies on the blue side I think. Remember your clouds disappear behind the foliage. Don't just fill in the middle with a cloud and another cloud. Mm. Oh, coming up here. Just soften. Um, put it in here. All ready for when I put the uh, foliage back. So it's all lost and found and I'm keeping the whole painting going. A lot of light in there. Right, I want to get that dry. Let's have a little sip of tea.
I'm giving a little plug for Patrick Lay Greaves. Uh, left a lovely comment on, on my yesterday was it yesterday Monday's painting Monday didn't paint yesterday Monday painting the poppies and I had not really heard of this artist but he's got almost as many videos as I have and I looked at his one of his demos a, a watercolor of a wave breaking down in Port Curnow. Down in Cornwall, we go to Cornwall quite a lot. Well, we mostly seem to go there every year, but it's a long drive from London. But um, have a look at his watercolours, he's really, really, really seriously good. I really won't mind the plug. I'll just get this. Oh, yeah. Because that's a, quite a light grey. Cloud here. Oh, and I want to make it darker in the middle there so that it highlights the white or the light. The clouds are never white, they're just a very off whitey sort of colour. And that comes all the way across there. So it's building up slowly with washes of colour. Nothing thick. Uh, not such a realistic grey, that is. It's probably red in it. And then get back to the light. There'll be plenty of cloth for this, or, or kitchen towel. I have got a big roll of, of cheap stuff, which is very good, but it's easier for me to use cast off sheets. Right, a little tiny bit of white, light well, light, just a tint of, of uh, yellow ochre. Some of the background showing through there. And a bit of, bit of light in here. Right. Okay, let that go. So we want to enhance that light on the water now. That's dry, so let's just pick some of the light up. Just drag across gently, reflecting the sky. Okay, now we'll have some light green going across there. A bit of yellow ochre mixed with the uh, lemon yellow, and we'll just drag that over there and some darker. Greens showing shadows in the the weed. Uh, more light light ochre in there. Okay, so we're coming on there. So we'll we need to do some. Uh, uh, I need to find a bristle brush to, just to put in that background again, so I'll bear with me. Let's move my back. I'll use this switch, this one here. This is not a cheap Chinese brush, this is quite an expensive uh, Baylor Bristle White B12. Right, so a bit of, bit of bluey green. I haven't used any of the Viridian. So let's just, oh, <laughs> the handle's come off. So, so much for a cheap brush. Well, what I'll do is just put it in the glue and push it back in the ferrule. And hopefully that'll stick. Right, okay, go back to this. Keep it uneven. I'm not copying this, I'm just making this bit up. Okay, a bit more in there. Uh, 
Okay, so that's that's more or less it. Let's just clean that brush. Don't forget, keep your brushes wet, otherwise they will dry beyond redemption. Right, I'll put that aside for the, to, so that it stick. Right, and let's put in the bit of the bottom church. So it's not in the photograph, but it was where we were, so slate grey. I will put it just off centre here. And a bit of, a bit of an ochre. It's slightly uh, steeper than that, so let's uh, go back up here. Well, I've exaggerated it a little bit, but. Over my head. No, it's too big, too big, too big. So I'll just take it out. I'll go back with the sky, and I'll go back to the, the, back on that in a couple of minutes. So let's just clean that brush, illuminate my screen once more. How easy that is. So, now the, bring your light, your your edges into each other. Blend. So it's all soft. Keep things soft if you can. Easy, easy said than done, but but it has a greater impact. All right, I'll, I'll reinstate that. So. Background just using that same brush. It has a greater impact if you if you blend. It's like a corner, of a corner of a building. We know it's dead straight and vertical and so on. And it's clearly defined by the sky or the, or the background. But if you paint it like that, it looks too, too, too graphic, too, too laboured. But if you blend it, it has a much greater impact. It looks more impressionist. And after all, that's what I'm trying to do, is a, an impression of a scene, not a copy. You know, I just bring that. I just bring that in. Look, just smudge it a little bit. There, yeah, it just makes it nice and nice and blended. So I just put in a little bit of a. I'm just looking for lights. Very important lights on. Lights and darks, the contrast. Now coming to more mud. Okay, we'll let that go for a moment. Right, now I'm going to go back onto that tree, the two, the two trees and, and the rest of it. Well, that's still a little, it needs a little more impasto on there. But at the moment we're just covering the canvas. Right, okay, so we'll go back with some yellow, some black, a lot of blue. And we'll get our nice dolls back in here.
the uh, leaves coming down. And just overhang a little bit there. And we can put in some branches and trunks and stuff in this. Okay, coming on. Black, blue, yellow, yellow, rich dark green. Try to make it look random. Okay, I'll do. Uh, let's put these, we'll say some of these darks here. Before we start putting our lights in. Black, blue, and yellow. And this nice mm. or yellow. Soft edges. There's other tree, or bush underneath all this, so a nice dark, shadowy green. It's time we put some wild flowers on that, it'll look quite pretty. Right now, mix a bit of yellow ochre with the, the uh, basic light green. catching the top of this bit here and put the dark back in there. So I'm building up this impasto, this surface. So I'm not using black on its own. I'm just Mixing it with the other colours to make a rich dark, rich dark green. There we go. Here, I, when this dries, I can drag over it. Right, that, that's dry there. So that's uh, yellow ochre and a bit of lemon yellow going in there. Maybe I should use a bigger brush for this. Yeah, let's go back. Let's get this big one going. That makes them back much nicer. Sort of mark in there. Also, the, br the bristles part and it gives you the grasses. through there, it's just a break in the trees. And there's, there's a lot of dikes around the whole area to keep the sea or the storm surges at bay. Bit of red. And after all, 
Well, it's, it's a summer day. Wouldn't have thought so, but we were judging by the sky. But we did have lovely weather last week, and it's all changed. We were camping in our trailer, and being in a trailer, not a lot of fun when it's pouring incessant rain, as we have had all over the place in Cornwall. But we get good weather, nothing better. Just show the top of this bushy thing here. Uh, some greens in here. You can uh, mix a lot of plaster of Paris or stuff like that to make a gesso. To give you a surface, to, it's, it's a shortcut to get into the dry brush stage and give an impression that you've got a lot of paint on the canvas or the support which you haven't. I'm right, just softening all this. We're building up now. Right, so more yellow, a bit of red, a bit of white, a bit of lemon yellow, and then we go. More green in there. Okay, that's coming on. Uh, just peering to see where the lights are. Oh, I lost it. Oh, I have to make it up now. The screen's gone black. Again. It's just screen safe, as you know. Some darks in there now, back in there. So there's, there's, there's nothing too difficult about this, it, it's just a matter of putting lights and darks against darks, counter change. Uh, we'll just go back in with the, uh, the dark green now, the really dark green. I've never seen anything wrong with using black. A lot of people, purists, will think they're purists. This parage it, but oh, I think it's a great colour. And after all, as I say, we're not uh, using it neat, we're modifying it with other colours. Good shortcut. And these are the shadow areas of the trees. Don't like that paint. Still need to be a bit more light and dark, a warmer dark, a uh, warmer light there. I'll see if that's a better one. Yeah, that's a bit better, it's keep soft. And probably not a realistic green, but I when you're struggling. Just catching the light on the top of this bush, coming through the underneath the tree here, and we've got a bit of sort of let's put a bit of a sort of path in there, where people have trapped to have a look, have a lovely view, which it is. I might put some yachts on there because it's a very yachty sort of place. All right. uh, I can see quite a bit of light there. Uh, put white in there. See now you can see that the paper stayed completely flat. Well, I'm just turning the, the texture here. 
a bit of that green back in the trees, the dark green. I'm just going over those really dark areas, just modifying it a little bit. Um, right. Well, we're coming on there. I think it's looking a bit dull at the moment, but I think we can afford to uh, start putting in. Oh, that's dried yet. No. I'll find another brush. I'll, I'll use a, a rigger. Bigger mortar is more like. Right, so a bit of water, dark colours, dark green. Oh, let's uh, just Nice little bits of we could put sort of uh, lights and darks, trunks, branches coming down. Plenty of water for this, otherwise it won't flow. I'll, I'll do some lights as well, some light trunks, just catching the light coming through. Now we've got some foliage in there. Right, okay, let's uh, do a bit of light grey, plenty of water. And we'll just some of this. Let's see where Dave gets carried away. Just little bits of. Don't know if do it. Alright, no, no. Gotta put some more lights back in, in this. Because it's. Uh, there's a lot of um, light coming from the clouds. Now, I'm not going to work this to a f an absolute finish because it would take too long. <coughs> it's always the end of the painting. It takes the longest because you, you, you can't resist the temptation to fiddle with it. Um, I'll put some lights in there, similar to the other side. So you can use whatever light colours you want. So they're just... Mm, mm, not but it'll just show a little bit of uh, something there. I'll go over that with a bit more texture in a moment. Right, let's put in some some grasses. So just an off an off green. Now what I did the other day or Monday was just a few. You don't need a lot. You can put as many as you want in if you want to hang it on your wall. But just a sort of random thing. Look, just do the tip of the, the, the rigger just to show just little bits of grasses. But don't, don't overdo this. It, just a suggestion. The, the, the brain puts the rest in. So we know that's grass. I mean, they're not portraits of bits of grass. They're, you can do that. Your, your mind will tell you what this is. Can you imagine what might this? Before we go ahead and put the poppies in. 
Okay, so here we go. Poppy brush. Pick up some, make you break the bristles up a little bit. Mm -mm -mm. A bit of red. I'll make some of those a bit bigger. To show the closeness. This is just a device, isn't it, really? Okay. Right, let's uh, get a bigger. Just put one or two to show close closeness. They're not all tiny bits. Oops. Don't like that. Just take that bit out. And then we'll come out. Right, with my big brush. I'm going to stipple in some yellows. Try to do this random, randomly. Otherwise, it just look too obvious. And the white ones, and the blue ones in. See, it's all good fun. The foreground, very, very easy. A bit of stipple. I'll do a bit of stipple in the leaves, I think. Why not? See, all the darks now appear to have some meaning because we're putting these lights on top and they now look shadowy. That's not very random. So if you've ever wondered how people like David Dipnall can do all their millions of graphs, bits of graphs and stuff, this is how it's done. Better than this, I'm just uh, demonstrating this. But, but every bit that helps you to make some nice meaningful marks on the paper. Okay, right, let's have some, let's have some blue in there. No, not dark blue, very light blue. It's a bit of white, a bit of blue. I'll show you. Have a lot. Acrylic is a wonderful medium. It's very forgiving. You can, because it dries so quick, that's its great property, but it does tend to go rather thin. Painting using a stay wet palette. Now, a lot of artists just work off plates and things. Whatever works for you is all I can say. There we are. Let's go around with some of the greens now, in the trees. Keep the brush nice and dry and clean. And we'll just do this. And finally, I'll put in some sky holes. So I can't see that. Just over the top. Oh, literally over the top. Oh, my phone's been going non stop this morning. There. Let's have some on the other side, eh? All that work on the background you now sort of starts to make a bit of sense. It's giving us our shadows without actually painting individual leaves other than this bit of stippling. Giving you all my secrets.
Are you still preserving most of the light? Oh, we're nearly done, I think. Just get some nice light colour on the top of here. Okay. Oh, well, that looks bad. Yeah. Now, I reckon a couple of little yachts in there, in the distance, being a, a yacht in paradise. Uh, it's oh, I was going to. These guys in church, aren't they? Let's have another go here. Just a dark slate grey. Oh, the shingles, I think. <coughs> <coughs> well, they look like it anyway. I don't know I was. Oh, yeah, I'll bottom church. I still need a bit more light on that. Uh, Soft. Lost and found. Okay. Uh, what else was there to do? Now I'm going to leave the sky like that. I'm not bothered about it. I'll sign it and I'll put it in the mount and we'll have a have a little look. Oh, I'll do that white, I think. And I'll clean the palette. This will be another one for you to be getting on with. Take those off. Oops. I hope it's not stuck to the board. It was yesterday, uh, Monday. I need a bit of masking tape. Just to hold it in that position. I'm very lucky to have this uh, studio. So, you know, we converted the loft about 30 years ago. Or oh, whenever it was. <coughs> and I, I use most of it as a studio and it, it's lovely I can lose myself up here oh there we are so I've not um, over elaborated I've, I've made it look complicated with all these bits but you saw how I did them it's very easy to overdo it this is always going to be a problem and when you look at a, a, a so I was going to put some, ah yes I was going to put some Light back in there, wasn't I? In the sky, I must do that. But when you look at a, a photograph, especially of the landscape with open skies, trees, uh, you say, How can I show all that? Well, you, I've shown you how to simplify it in, in what 40 minutes to paint shapes and then just do a bit on top. It gives the impression that you've done a lot when you haven't. Smoke and mirrors, really. Right, let's just put in some of this sky holes, bird holes. You can do it with a little brush, but uh, it looks a bit uh, mannered. So there we are, Bosom from Chidham. Chidham's one side of this in there. The sea is this, this way, down here. This is the land, that way. <coughs> so we were walking along here and we got the other side of this dike and, and we got over a little bridge and onto the A259 for those that know the area. And looking across from Chidham, beautiful, beautiful 
Get down there, folks, I'm not joking. It's an artist's paradise and a bird watcher's paradise. Alright, in. Right, I'll zoom in. So we'll have a look. Let's have a look at uh, the distance. That's all I've done, look. It looks distant because I've dragged the sky colour and the water colour over it a little bit to soften it. So here's my stipple. Oh, I've really gone to town there, but what, five minutes? To do all this foreground. I'm a great believer in doing foregrounds quickly because you're looking, you're looking out there. That is your view, not down at your feet. But it's there, it's there. But when you look at this picture, you go into the yacht, into the, the church, and then you'll start to look around the picture. Best I can do in the 40 minutes. I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching.